So, in the previous class, we actually go through the thing which is called waves. So, this chapter is wave motion. So, you already know there are transverse and longitudinal wave motions. That means, the motion in which the particles of the medium which execute SHM about their mean position in a direction which is perpendicular to the direction of propagation of the wave that is called transverse motions. So like one of the example is light wave. So, we already know the basic thing that means the motion in which the motion in which the particles of the medium that means the particles of the medium of the medium execute SHM execute SHM about their mean position about their mean position in a direction in a direction which is perpendicular which is perpendicular to the direction of propagation to the direction of propagation that is called propagation of the wave and that is called you can say transverse and already we know that the wave motion what does it mean that means this is the wave right it is directed along it is going along these directions and there are particle there are lots of particles are there that will form the wave motions that will vibrate in the perpendicular directions like that that means they are moving in a perpendicular directions but the wave are propagated along these directions then this is called you can say the transverse wave and the wave motion in which in which the particles in which the particles of the medium of the medium execute SHM execute SHM about their mean position about their mean position but in a direction you can say but in a direction of wave propagation in the direction of you can say wave propagation and that is called longi that is called longitudinal and there are different terms related to the wave like wavelength, time period, amplitude, wave velocity. One thing that you already know, you know the about the wavelength that is generally denoted by lambda. There are you can say wavelength that means you can say that lambda multiplied by you can say the frequency this is a frequency that will give you the velocity that you know that means this is this is nothing but frequency so there are another term this is called time period and frequency frequency that is denoted at mu in some here it is denoted at n whatever be the thing all are same and you know time period that is equals to 1 by frequency right and of course what is wavelength wavelength is nothing but the distance between two nearest particle of the medium which are vibrating in the same phase that is called wavelength time period the time in which a particle of the medium completes one cycle that means this is you can say from there to there this is one time period as well as the difference is lambda that means the path distance between two nearest particles and 
there are some terms that we already introduced there are amplitude generally dated as a what is amplitude the maximum displacement this is nothing but the maximum you can say displacement which is suffered you can say which is suffered by the particle suffered by the particle right and there is a term this is called wave velocity this is called wave velocity so what is wave velocity that means the propagation the propagation speed of a wave in a fixed direction in a fixed direction that is called you can say wave velocity or you can say this is called phase velocity and what we know that wave velocity v that can be denoted at lambda mu right so frequency multiplied by you can say wavelength that will give you the velocity and from there what we got we got an equation in the previous class that is nothing but the displacement relation we got the displacement relation in a progressive wave displacement relation in a progressive wave we got that what is the equations let if this y of x t that represents that you can say represents the transverse that represent the transverse displacement transverse displacement of the traveling wave of the traveling wave in the positive x direction in the positive x direction at position x and time t then you can say this can be represented as the equation is y x t that is equals to some amplitude into sine say k x minus omega t if we take phi s that is phi naught that means what is this this is nothing but the displacement you can say if this is the corresponding displacement and what is a this is the you can say amplitude this is nothing but the amplitude this is the angular k is you can say wave number and k is can also be written by 2 pi by lambda this omega this is angular frequency and omega can be written as 2 pi into frequency or 2 pi by t whatever be the thing and this phi is nothing but you can say the initial phase so we got that right so if we now want to find what we got we got the wave velocity right so now if we want to find this particular wave velocity that means you can say if we say that this is the speed of a traveling wave if we consider speed of a traveling wave what we know as the wave moves as the waves that moves as the wave moves what we know that means each point of the moving wave from of the moving wave from wave from represent represent a particular phase 
of the wave and retains its displacement y and retains its displacement y so what we know therefore the displacement relations thus you know the total phase of the sign that must be a constant that means what we got kx minus omega t that particular thing that particular thing is constant that means if this is a constant then if we want to find the velocity that means we have to differentiate it if we differentiate the constant that will give you 0 and this is k is constant so dx with respect to dt and this is only omega because d with respect to dt this is a d with respect to dt and t equals to 0. So what we got this is a velocity and this is the wave velocity minus omega equals to 0. So the velocity of the wave that we got is omega by k or you can say lambda by t or you can say lambda into frequency whatever be the thing we will got that particular thing right so that we already got right so the thing is that this is the speed of the traveling wave now the only thing that we have to know the formula that means there are some formulas like what should be the speed of the transverse wave in a stress string that means if speed of the you can say transverse wave in stressed you can say string what should be the speed of the transverse wave in stress string that means that will depend upon two factor one is the you can say linear mass density mu and another one this is the tension in the string that means the velocity v that can be some constant root of the this t by mu this is the corresponding formula where this c is dimensionless quantity this is the dimensionless quantity which is experimentally equal to 1 which is experimentally equals to 1 so that's why the velocity is root of a t by mu right now this is the transverse wave now if we want to find the speed of the longitudinal speed of the longitudinal wave or you can say what should be the speed of the sound wave we already know some part of that in class uh, i think some of the part that is known to you or when we are going through the thermodynamics we will learn about the velocity but now you just know the formula that means for the sound wave that will also depends on the two factor one is bulk modulus that is b and another is density of the medium this is rho so velocity is root of our b by rho that means bulk modulus you know already that this is valid only for the you know liquids specifically or gas so this is not valid for solid so if we want to find the speed of this longitudinal wave but when the wave is passing through the solid this velocity is nothing but y by rho where y is the young's modulus y is the young's modulus and rho is nothing but the density of the medium so 
this is the thing that we already know now in the previous class we are going through the thing that is nothing but the progressive wave we solve some problems from the progressive wave and all those stuffs now there is another wave that is called you can say standing wave or stationary wave the first one is a progressive wave that means the wave is moving with some velocity but this is called you can say standing waves or this is called stationary waves standing waves or stationary waves so what we know that any stationary wave can be formed you can say that any stationary wave you can say that can be formed can be formed by the addition of two traveling wave by the addition of two traveling waves moving in the opposite directions moving in the opposite direction that means they are superimposed on each other having same amplitude frequency wavelength and speed having you can say same amplitude frequency wavelength and speed so let's say a wave is moving in one direction that means say if it should be like that say if it is possible that a wave is moving in the opposite directions and after reflection it will again back in the opposite direction that means they will superimpose in each other and they will produce the stationary wave so let's say one of the wave this is nothing but a sin omega t minus kx so after reflection the wave is the same wave everything is same only the directions are different so the y2 xt that can also be written as sine only the sine that will change k plus kx right so principle of superposition that says that means this xt plus y2 that of xt now so this is a sine omega t minus kx plus a sine omega t plus kx a is taken as a common and the formula is a plus b by 2 into a minus b by 2 or whatever be the thing the final result is sine kx into cos omega t so whenever you found that the equation is written like that that means in the this format this is nothing but the required conditions or the required equation of the station standing wave so here this cos omega t here you can say this cos omega t that actually shows varying shows varying amplitude with time amplitude with time at a particular place and this sin kx that shows a varying amplitude varying amplitude with position at a particular time with position at a particular time so when when sin zero means 
this is nothing but the total amplitude right this is nothing but the total amplitude that means you can write like that so or uh, sorry the cos you can say the cos term also you can say that that will also give you the thing now the question is that when this kx is equals to 0 what do you mean by kx equals to 0 the sign is 0 right that means 0 or pi or 2 pi or dot 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 n pi in both cases because sin 0 is 0 sin pi is 0 sin 2 pi that is also 0 so these terms are 0 that means this position of 0 amplitudes when this is 0 that means this are the 0 amplitude that means this you can say positions of this 0 amplitude are called are called nodes that are called nodes and when this value is maximum sine value is maximum when the value is pi by 2 or 3 pi by 2 or 5 pi by 2 dot 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 or you can say n plus 1 right by 2 this is a pi by 2 so when this particular case and for integers n equals to 0 1 2 like that when you put the value of n equals to 1 you will get the first thing when n equals to 0 we will get the first thing when n equals to 1 you will get the second thing that means you will get you know maximum amplitude that means the value of x that is lambda by 4 or 3 lambda by 4 if you put that that means the value of x x k is 2 pi by lambda if you put that that means this is actually 2 pi by lambda into x and from there we can find the value of x x is lambda by 4 3 lambda by you can say 4 or 5 lambda by 4 dot 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 n plus half lambda by 2 so these are the positions of maximum amplitudes right so these positions of you can say maximum amplitudes this is a maximum amplitudes that are called you can say anti nodes that are called anti nodes right so in that case also you can get the value of x x is 2 pi by lambda that means initially this is 0 lambda by 2 lambda c lambda by 2 2 lambda like that so if you see a general sine wave say this one is a sine wave what we know if we start from 0 if we just consider the positions that means this one is lambda by 4 this one is lambda by 2 this one is 3 lambda by 4 this one is lambda so you just see when this at lambda by 4 the amplitude is maximum that means this is the position of anti node right this is the position of node because if you see that at lambda by 2 position at lambda by 2 positions what we got that amplitude is minimum so it goes on like that then again this one is a anti node and this one is a node like that okay so these are the thing right so these are the important things that you have to know that when the anti nodes will occur and when the nodes will occur because that will helpful when we are dealing with the open pipe or the closed pipe like that so there is one thing that is called stationary waves in a string stationary wave in a string fixed at both end fixed at both ends so we are considering we 
consider a string of length l that is stressed that is stressed under you can say a tension t between two fixed points between two fixed points if the string is plucked if the string is plucked and released dutu string dutu dik atkano ami ekbar tene chhere dilam tale ki hobe the incident and the reflected wave the incident and the reflected you can say wave that superimposed that superimposed to produce stationary wave to produce stationary waves in the string right so that means this is the thing this is the two rigid end and i am putting a spring there that means what will happen it should be looks like that that means this is the corresponding thing so within this are the anti nodes right these are the nodes and in the middle the amplitude is the maximum so in middle the empty nodes are produced right so this position is x equals to 0 and this position is x equals to l now you see if it is a sine wave this position is a minimum amplitude or node this position is a minimum amplitude node and if this is 0 this is lambda by 4 and this is lambda by 2 that means the node to node distance that is lambda by 2 and node to anti node or anti node to node that particular distance is lambda by 4 that you have to know because this is a simple thing so there is a node and there is also node and between this there is an anti node so what we can say the distance between them you can say is l this is lambda by 2 that we got so you just remember that particular nodes any nodes that means the minimum amplitudes right nodes formed you can say at rigid from that rigid end and anti nodes you can say that formed in between them right and generally number of nodes that equals to 1 plus number of anti nodes number of nodes is equals to 1 plus number of anti nodes so what we got the velocity of wave this is already we got this is a t by m or t by mu whatever be the thing where mu is the mass per unit length so you can got the frequency so there is the first thing that we got that is called the fundamental mode or the first mode of vibration that means what we got the frequency frequency is 1 by lambda root of a t by mu that we got as a frequency because you know velocity multiplied velocity is equals to frequency into lambda so i can got the frequency this is nothing but frequency and already know velocity is equals to lambda into frequency and from there we can got that so these are the thing that we got and also this lambda what we got this lambda l equals to lambda by 2 so 
if we talk about the fundamental that is called fundamental mode or first mode of vibration first mode of vibration what we know lambda if we represent this one that is equals to 2l because what we got l equals to lambda by 2 that means lambda equals to 2l right so if lambda equals to 2l so what we know that the frequency one that is 1 by lambda 1 root of our t by mu or 1 by 2l root of our t by mu i am just putting the value lambda 1 plus of lambda 1 i am putting 2l and this particular frequency this particular frequency that is called you can say fundamental this is called fundamental frequency or first harmonic this is called first harmonic right the so second mode of vibration if we want to find the second mode of vibration then what we got that means if this is the wave what we got i am taking this this is lambda by 2 so if we take this one this is nothing but lambda so in that particular case this lambda 2 is equals to l this lambda 2 is equals to l because if this is the you know string that means here are two vibration right like that so this is a node and this is also node but within this there is also another node right this is maximum amplitude this is maximum amplitude so node to node that distance is lambda by 2 and again node to node this distance is lambda by 2 that means every time what will happen initially there are only single that's why i am written like that when in the second times what will happen within the length is same right but the waves are producing like that waves are producing in the third time the length are same but but the waves are producing like that so you can say like that so that will happen every time because there is a reflection so we are now dealing with the second case that means this rigid this is a you can say node and a middle point that is also node so node to node lambda by 2 this is a lambda by 2 and this is a lambda by 2 that means lambda by 2 plus lambda that means lambda 2 by 2 plus lambda 2 by 2 that is now equal to l that means lambda 2 is equal to l and the rest of the thing are similar that means if we want to find a frequency that is 1 by lambda 2 root of our t by mu so this is 1 by l root of our t by mu and this is nothing but you can write 2 of mu 1 i can write because mu 1 is already found mu 1 is in the previous case we got the value of mu 1 that is 2 1 by 2 l root of t by mu so 1 by l this is 2 by mu so i can write it 2 mu 1 right and this particular frequency this frequency that is called second harmonic you should remember the term that is called second harmonic or this is called first overtone that is called first overtone that means if we want to consider third mode of vibration you can easily calculate by its own third mode of vibration what do you have to do that means the length is same this is the rigid wall this is also some rigid thing and there are three more that means you can say this one is the wave so another wave would be produced like that so this is a third so in that post this is a note middle point this is a note this middle point this is a note this middle point this is a note so note to note you already know this is lambda by 2 this is lambda 3 by 2 this note to note lambda 3 by 2 this note to note lambda 3 by 2 
So actually what we can say lambda 3 by 2 plus lambda 3 by 2 plus lambda 3 by 2 that is equals to L because L is fixed. So you will got you got that 3 lambda 3 by 2 correct and then if we want to find the frequency this is 1 by lambda t root of t by mu. So this is if you put this value this is 3 by 2 L because in place of lambda 3 I can place 2 L by 3. So this is 3 by 2 L root of t by mu and this is nothing but 3 of frequency 1 and this frequency that is called and you can say this frequency that is called third harmonic. This is called third harmonic or second overtone, right? So, generally we got that. So, this is nothing but what I am dealing with the thing this is called the stationary waves in string at fixed at both end. Now we are dealing with the stationary wave in an organ pipe right. Now we are dealing with the station this is the same as the previous one little bit of difference is there standing wave or stationary wave in an in an organ pipe. So, what we know? What is organ pipe? That actually this organ pipes that are musical, right? These are musical instruments, musical instrument which are used for producing used for producing musical sound musical sound by blowing air into the pipe blowing air into the pipe and it works on the principle of superposition and it like Basi, Basi je bajano hai, this is called a organ pipe and this works on the, you can say the principle of superposition, superposition of incident and reflected and reflected longitudinal waves. So, there are two type of thing one is called closed organ pipe that means one part is closed right. So, it should be looks like that one part is closed. So, when this part is closed there is a node right. So, it should be like that there is only that thing that means this part is anti node and this part is node. So, what we understood this particular length is L. Now, anti node to node you know the difference is lambda by 4 right because if we consider sine wave this is a node and this is an anti node this is again node that means node to anti node that difference is lambda by 4. So, what we got? we got here that the length L that is equals to lambda by 4 right and so lambda is equals to 4 L. So, if we found that the frequency that means here the frequency if we want to found that means frequency you can represent it with respect to velocity or some other thing that means frequency into lambda that is equals to velocity. So, frequency equals to v by lambda. So, this is v by 4L. So, this is called 
the fundamental frequency or the first harmonic right this is called you can say v by 4l this is the fundamental mode or first harmonic now in the second case what will happen that means this pipe is same that means length is same but wave are produced like that you can say this can be produced like that this can be produced like that that means what will happen here that means initially there is only this wave now in middle of that there should be some antinodes and that's why i am written like that this is a node you can say this is the node that has been created in the middle so that's why i am written like that so node to node what is this this is a node this is a node this is the anti node node to node this is a lambda 1 by 2 and this is lambda 1 by 4 this is anti node to node the total distance this is lambda 1 by 4 plus lambda 1 by 2 that is equal to length l so that is 3 lambda 1 3 lambda 1 by 4 equals to l or you can say lambda 1 equals to 4 l by 3 so what we know that the frequency this is equals to v by lambda 1 so this is velocity by lambda 1 this is 4 l by 3 so you can say 3 of mu naught right we got 3 mu naught because v by 4 l that we already got as a mu naught so this is the third harmonic right this is the third harmonic this is called the third harmonic so and uh, of course if this is the third harmonic then first overtone this is the third harmonic or first overtone right next case what will happen if this is the closed pipe that means within this there is two node that has been produced so i have to draw like that like that so there is also node so node to node you know lambda 3 by 2 lambda 2 by 2 if i represent like that this is also lambda 2 by 2 because and this is an anti node so the distance is lambda 2 by 4 so the total distance lambda 2 by 4 plus lambda 2 by 2 plus lambda 2 by 2 equals to l so if you talk about that this is a 4 2 2 that means 5 lambda 2 by 4 equals to l so lambda 2 equals to 4 l by 5 so now this frequency you know this can be written as v by lambda 2 so v by 4l this is a 5 so 5 of mu naught so this is the 5 mu naught that means this is a fifth harmonic or second overtone that means the observation that we got in closed pipe only odd harmonics are present only odd harmonics are present because you find that we got mu naught we got 3 mu naught we got 5 mu naught dot 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 that means even harmonics are absent right so what we got here that means in it are overtones in it overtones that is equals to 2n plus 1 it you can say harmonic 
n it over tone that is equals to 2n plus 1 harmonic right only odd harmonics are present now if we talk about this is the closed pipe of course if we talk about open pipe open pipe that means both end are open that means within middle somewhere you can say the node has been produced so this is an anti node this is an anti node anti node to anti node or node to node what are we saying anti node to anti node or node to node the difference is lambda by 2 only the anti node to node or node to anti node that is lambda by 4 so this is lambda by 2 and lambda by 2 is equals to l so you can say lambda naught by 2 equals to l so lambda naught equals to 2l so that means the frequency mu naught that is nothing but you can say velocity by lambda naught velocity by 2l that we got and this is same as the thing fundamental fundamental you can say mode or you can say this is called first harmony first right so in the next case what will happen that means somewhere there are node are created okay so like that so if this is anti node and this is anti node what will happen anti node to node this is a lambda 1 by 4 node to node lambda 1 by 2 node to anti node lambda 1 by 4 so the total is lambda 1 by 4 plus lambda 1 by 2 that means lambda 1 by 4 equals to l so this is nothing but lambda 1 right this is a lambda 1 equals to l that means the frequency can be written v by lambda 1 so v by l so you can write 2 into v by 2 l that means 2 into mu naught so you just find here even harmonics that are present in the previous case when we are dealing with the closed pipe what we found that only the only that particular things are present which are odd harmonics right but in that case what we found the even harmonics that are also been present so the thing is like that now so if we can if we draw the next case you will also find the thing that means if we draw the next case there is a node there is a node there is a node so it should be like that it should be like that so there is anti node there is anti node so what do we know anti node to node this is a lambda 2 by 4 node to node lambda 2 by 2 this is node to node lambda 2 by 2 node to anti node lambda 2 by 4 so you just find this lambda 2 by 2 that means this is a lambda 2 and this is so that means lambda 2 by 4 plus lambda 2 by 2 lambda 2 by 2 plus lambda 2 by 4 this is equals to l so this is lambda 2 by 2 plus lambda 2 equals to l so c lambda 2 by 2 equals to l that means lambda 2 equals to 2l by 3 right so this is a frequency this is v by lambda 2 so v by 3 by 2 l and so 3 into frequency dot so you can find that even and all both harmonics are because first is mu naught second is 2 mu naught third is 3 mu naught that means what we can say here all even and odd harmonics that are present right and the thing is that here in it overtones that is equals to n plus 1 it harmonic right this is n plus 1 harmonic so the thing is that these are the thing that we got so in open pipe so it is obvious that you can say 
since both odd and even both harmonics are present in open pipe so the sound which are emitted from the open pipe that are more sweeter than the closed pipe so that is been of the fact so now we are in a position to solve some problem right so there is something so we got there are three type of velocities one is the normal particle velocity that we got from the equation because y is given so if we dy with respect to dt then we will got the particle velocity another velocity that means this is the wave velocity that is nothing but the wave velocity so wave velocity is like that so there are three velocities are available because you just think this is the wave so wave is moving with some velocity v that is called phase velocity or wave velocity that is omega by k you already got the y equals to some equation y sin say omega t minus kx that means if we differentiate with that we will get the velocity this is called the particle velocity and sorry and one that is called this is the particle velocity that means particle within the wave that is moving with some velocity and another is called that is called group velocity like group velocity is like like a you know light wave right uh, white light white light is consists of several other lights so within white light is moving with some velocities right but white light itself consists of different you can say white light is consists of seven colors and you can say that different waves have different wavelength and different velocity but as a whole the white light is moving with some particular velocity and that is called the group velocity that is called the group velocity so and group velocity is nothing but is written as d omega with respect to dk d omega with respect to dk that is nothing but the group velocity that means what we got the phase velocity is omega by k right so if we differentiate the thing if we differentiate the thing that means we can differentiate this omega by k is given so i have to pipe d omega with respect to dk so if we say omega equals to k into phase velocity so d omega with respect to dk that can we can write like that this is k is a constant and this is a d of vp with respect to dk plus vp uv formulas k is constant then we are differentiated it d of vp with respect to dk and then vp is constant dk with respect to dk is 1 so what we got this is nothing but the group velocity which is k d of phase velocity plus the phase velocity that we already got and what we know k is equals to you can say 2 pi by lambda so from that also you can say if we do dk by k that is minus 2 pi by lambda square and d lambda right that means this is i am just doing dk here differentiate with dk with respect to just i am written here what i can do that k equals to 2 pi by lambda so i am differentiate with dk with respect to d lambda so this is minus 2 pi is common 1 by lambda square 
is coming and of course this 2 pi by lambda this is also this what I can write 2 pi by lambda by lambda so 2 pi by lambda equals to k by lambda and this is a dk by d lambda so what we can say from there we can write dk by k equals to minus d lambda by lambda I can write like that okay so here also if I put this because this is a k by dk is given so you can also convert it into lambda so whatever be the thing this is the relation right one of the relations that is important that is group velocity can be related with the phase velocity and here I can replace this that means this is a dp that means I can say minus lambda d of vp by d lambda plus vp I can write like that. So, this is the relation between group velocity and phase velocity. Now, there are some questions uh, that has been asked like um, ok we will start with the simple one if the question is given like that say the question is say two strings a and b of same material are stressed by same tension. The radius of the string A is double the radius of string B transverse wave travels on string A with speed V A and on string on string A with speed A and on string B with speed V B. The ratio V A by V B is that you have to found one by four, one by two, two, four. That means two strings are there A and B of the same material that are stretched by same tension. The radius of the string A that is double the radius of string B. The transverse wave travels on string A with speed V A and on string B with speed V B. What should be the ratio of V A by V B? That is the question. Let's try once, then we will solve the problem.
So, here what we have to do? What we know that velocity of the transverse wave on a string, velocity of a transverse wave on a thing that is given as root over t by mu. What we know? This mu is the linear mass density of string. So, this is m by l mass per unit length. Mass means the rho into v density into volume and volume is equals to area into length. That means this is rho into pi into r square because this is the area is pi r square. So, what is the ratio that you want to found? That means this is vt that is root of t by mu is rho pi r square that means 1 by r root of t by you can say rho pi. So, all things are constant because since you can say t and rho that are same for both things. So, you can say this V A by V B equals to R B by R A because 1 by R this is inversely proportional and that is equals to 1 by 2. That is the simple thing that we got. So, I think that particular part that is understandable jodi na bujhte paro tahole amay jiggesh kore nebe so no one questions jeta eshe chilo dhoro m se question ta hocche ei rokom এবং আগের দিন কিন্তু আমরা একটা করা জিনিস দেখেছিলাম যে রেজাল্টেন্ট অ্যাম্পলিটিউড অফ দা সুপারপোজিশন ওয়েভ দ্যাট ইজ a1 স্কয়ার প্লাস 2 a2 স্কয়ার প্লাস 2 a1 a2 cos phi এবং ইনটেনসিটি মানে অ্যাম্পলিটিউড স্কয়ার তার মানে ইনটেনসিটি যদি তুমি দাও দ্যাট ইজ নাথিং বাট i1 প্লাস i2 প্লাস রুট অফ আর i1 i2 cos phi সো এটা হচ্ছে ইনটেনসিটি among this one is nothing but amplitude right so there are questions erakum diyeche boleche two waves represented by y equals to a sin omega t minus k x and y equals to a cos omega t minus k x that are super post the resultant wave resultant wave will have an amplitude will have an amplitude either a root 2 a 2 a 0 
so in that particular case if we want to find the resultant amplitude what we know if we want to find the resultant amplitude there is a sine term and there is a cos term so the difference the phase difference between sine and cos that is equals to pi by 2 the resultant wave that means a1 that is equals to a and a2 that is also a so if we want to find the resultant amplitude what we know the formula is a1 square plus a2 square plus 2 a1 a2 into cos phi that means this is a e square plus e square plus 2 a a and cos pi by 2 so if you just put the formula because cos pi by 2 is 0 so this is a root 2a the answer is root 2a so this is the thing so So, today's class up to this point, I think so. Uh, we will solve problem in the next class, that means tomorrow at I think 4.30, right? 4.30 or 5.30, I just let you know.